Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. In Photoshop, saving works a bit differently from other programs. Instead of working with one main file type, like a document in Word, you'll find several options to choose from, including JPEG, PSD, and more. If any of these formats sound unfamiliar, that's okay. I'm going to tell you more about them over the course of this video. Ultimately, the option you choose just depends on the project. Take this image for example. Here I have a simple photo that I took myself. All I did was crop and rotate it. Now I'd like to send a copy to my friends. A common file type like JPEG or PNG would be a great choice for this. Probably JPEG because that's better for high quality photos. These file types can be viewed and edited on almost any computer or device, so that makes them perfect for sharing with others. What if you had a photo that you put a little more work into? For example, something with text or adjustment layers. If you only saved it as a regular image, you wouldn't be able to come back and re-edit those things later. Luckily, Photoshop has a special format called PSD that'll preserve your layers and other important info. PSD files can only be opened in Photoshop, so if you plan to share the image, you'll just need to save a copy in one of the common formats too. No matter what format you plan to use, you'll find everything you need under File on the menu bar. If you're saving an image for the first time, or saving a new version, you'll generally use Save As. This will give you access to all the common file types, including PSD. This part of the process is pretty simple. Just type a name for your file, then choose where you want it to be saved. If the original file is in the same folder and you don't want it to be overwritten, just make sure to use a different file name. When you're done, go ahead and click the menu here, and you can select the format you want. As you can see, there are lots of options to choose from beyond what we've already talked about, including bitmap, GIF, and much more. In this case, we're going to choose Photoshop, also known as PSD, so we can keep editing the image later if we need to. With this option, make sure Layers is checked, then click the Save button, and that's all it takes. Now you can save your progress anytime by going back to File, then clicking Save. Let's take a look at Save for Web next. This is a really good option if you're planning to post the final image online, for instance on your blog, portfolio, or any other website. All you have to do is click, and you'll be taken to a special dialog box. As you can see, this works a little differently from Save As. You'll still find formats like JPEG and PNG to choose from, but this time you can optimize them for the web. You'll also find other settings that'll help you prep the image for posting. If you go with JPEG, for instance, you can customize the quality level. You may want to experiment with this while you watch the preview on the left. The goal is to find the right balance between quality and a smaller file size. That's what really makes an image suitable for the web. The number below the preview will tell you exactly what the file size is. Now look closely at the tabs at the top of the window. See them up here on the left? If you click the one that says 2 up, you can actually compare your changes to the original image. This is an easy way to make sure you haven't lost too much quality with the options you've chosen. In this example, the images look pretty similar, but the file size on the new version is quite a bit smaller. You can also change the dimensions of your image right here in the dialog box. This can be a good way to reduce the image if you're still struggling with file size. Just enter the width or height that you want, then press Enter on your keyboard, and you can see the effect immediately. When you're ready, go ahead and click Save. Then follow the usual steps of naming the file and choosing a location. Now click Save one more time, and that's it! Ultimately, the saving option you choose will vary from project to project. Sometimes you'll save a copy in more than one format, like we just did here. The best way to go about it is to think ahead and try to imagine what you'll need from the image, both now and in the future. Soon the whole process of saving will start to feel like second nature.